Hi there, I'm Amy Mooney and I'm a speech and language pathologist uh, affiliated with the Parkinson Center of Oregon at Oregon Health and Sciences University. I've been a speech and language pathologist for 21 years uh, with all of the, that time spent in the care of um, adults with neurological illness or injury. All right, so let's start with the basics. So what is Parkinson's? Well, as we know, it's a neurodegenerative disease. It's chronic, it is progressive, uh, but the presentation is individualized. And I work with a, um, a uh, neurophysician that talks about, a neurologist that specializes in movement disorders, and he always says, if you've seen 100 patients with Parkinson's, you've seen one patient with Parkinson's. Everyone is different. The presentation is different in everybody. Um, it is multifaceted. We'll talk today about both the motor and the non-motor symptoms, and you'll hear the research that's been done that what is uh, most disabling in terms of people's perception are the non-motor symptoms, and those are the things that we can help with. Uh, Parkinson's is unpredictable, and it does have a progression to increased disability. Here are the statistics. There are currently one and a half million people diagnosed with Parkinson's, but every year we see 60,000 new diagnoses. That's a lot of folks. Um, only about 15% of people diagnosed are under the age of 50, so it really is uh, still a disease of the older individual. Men get Parkinson's a little more frequently than women, just 60% versus 40%. And like I've alluded to earlier, the baby boomers are here. They're not even on the way. We're starting to see that. And so we are going to see a large increase in this population. Okay, what causes Parkinson's? Well, um, we know that Parkinson's is a problem with a lack of dopamine. And dopamine is your chemical messenger that's produced in your midbrain. And in people with Parkinson's, uh, we start to see clinical signs when they've lost 70 to 80 percent of that dopamine. And dopamine is your kind of on-off button. It's the, the um, initiator of movement in your body. We don't know the cause. There's a lot of literature around what may cause it. Um, is it the environment, um, meaning pesticides or plastics? Um, is it genetics? Is it aging? Um, or is it a combination of a variety of these figures? We just don't know. There's some evidence for each of these. And there's just a nice uh, picture to show you where the basal ganglia is located. And how do we make the diagnosis? Well, it is a clinical diagnosis. So, of course, um, uh, movement disorders neurologists are going to perform imaging to rule out other neurological problems or illnesses or injuries, um, but um, it's a clinical diagnosis that they make in their office and they're looking at, you know, is it idiopathic Parkinson's or is it one of the Parkinson's plus syndromes? And I'll talk a lot about what the differences are in those two. Um, so sometimes you might see clients in your office that feel frustrated that it's taken them so long to get their diagnosis. Well, I saw a doctor 10 years ago and he said it might be MS or it might be ALS or, and then I saw somebody else and finally now I have this diagnosis. And so what I say to patients is Parkinson's is progressive and it presents itself slowly. And so it's not necessarily true that that physician you saw 10 years ago was wrong or was a poor diagnostician. It's just that your symptoms weren't presenting themselves fully yet. Um, so it does take a long time sometimes for that diagnosis. 